What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Palantir stock, ticker symbol PLTR on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day, Monday, June 3rd. All right guys, so Palantir stock back here on Friday, finishing out this last week, down five cents a share, minus 0.23%, essentially flat here in the after hours. Listen, let's take a look at this stock as we head in here to tomorrow, a new week, a fresh week, Monday, and try to get the best possible picture of what we can expect here tomorrow. Now listen, to do that, we're gonna take a look at the directional bias coming out of the volume profile. We're gonna look at the psychological trading levels. A lot of decisions are gonna be made around those. We need to be aware of them. We'll look at the implied volatility, the expected move for tomorrow, and the directional bias for tomorrow coming out of the chain. So let's get started here with that directional bias volume profile analysis here on the five minute chart. Listen, if you guys appreciate the, the daily Palantir uh, analysis, Palantir is, of course, a daily upload, please hit the like button. I appreciate it, but not only that, it, it makes your life much easier. It signals to YouTube that, like, hey, each day, please just drip these into my feed. It makes you a lot easier for you to find these. And in return, I will keep feeding the Palantir analysis daily. So listen, let's take a look under the hood here from Friday and see what kind of directional bias we can pull out. Now, it was down a little bit. So bears, you guys want to see a small amount, at least minimum, of bearish bias. Bulls, ideally, we would see no bias at all. Or, of course, bullish bias, but a more, I'd say, realistic on a red day is at least no bias at all. That would mean that there was really no bearish bias supporting what happened in the price action. So let's take a look under the hood and see what we can find. Off the open, very contextual. Volume fades quickly. That's normal. Okay, through here, honestly, guys, this volume, it's not, some people might look at that and say, well, there's a lot of consecutive red bars. I don't know. For me, it wasn't quite out of context enough to really assign anything. If I had to assign something, it'd be the minimum that I ever assigned, which is 5% bearish bias there, simply due to the drop off after the red bars and the amount of consecutive red bars with, of course, one doji. That, that's going to be the white volume bar. But very minimal. As we move through the rest of the day, really nothing big enough to assign. And then as we head into the close, first of all, this, this big white bar, first of all, that's a doji, which is why it's white. It means it opened at the same point that it closed at the candle. That's a rebouncing bar, right? A lot of buying, a lot of selling happening all by algorithms. But on top of that, we got a pretty aggressive upside push in volume. We expect the upside push in volume into the close. But this was a little bit more aggressive than what is maybe typical, over 2 million shares on the uh, bar right before the closing bell, and all green bars. So for me, that's like maybe, you know, it's not ridiculous. It's not tremendous at all. It's somewhat contextual. It's just a little bit out of the ordinary, maybe 10% bullish bias there. So net-net, we're probably looking at about 5% bullish bias, which on a small red day, Bears may be a little bit disappointing that you didn't, I mean, obviously you guys won the day by five cents to the downside, but you didn't really see any, any bias in the volume profile to support that, whereas bulls kind of flipped the script. So bulls, given what already happened in the price action, not a bad thing to see here in the volume profile. Now, let's move on to the psychological self-fulfilling prophecy trading levels that we're going to want to be aware of here tomorrow. So you guys remember, back on Friday... Or I'm sorry, heading into Friday, so back on Thursday, which is this day on the left here. We had reclaimed, or I should say we had bounced off and really solidified these both as support levels. Here on Friday, we gave up that 50 period. Of course, it's going to get dragged up with the stock as it moves higher. And we gave that up. So bears, we had talked about this back on Thursday. That was at least, you know, half of what you guys wanted to see, because ideally you'd want to break downside through both of these. But bulls, we tried to make a run at it into the close and kind of got hung up. So here's the story tomorrow, because nobody owns this right now, the 50 period on the 30 minute chart. Bears, you want to reject off the 50 as hard as you can, start heading down toward a test of the 200 period. Ideally, if you can break the 200 period of the downside, also that's a huge win for you bears on the 30 minute. Bulls, priority number one. Get back up above the 50, test it, and bounce away. Ideally, each bounce off the 50 on as much volume as possible, whether there's one or 10, okay? You want the retest to be on low volume and the bounces to be on high volume to show that like kind of offset in, 
bets being placed on each event. And that would support your bias, of course. Okay? Now, the four-hour chart. Back on Thursday, guys, we had just reclaimed the 200 period. That was beautiful to see. Well, we gave it up here on Friday. However, we held the 50 period as support. So it's not all bad. Okay, but here tomorrow, clearly this is a battle of this channel. Bulls, we want to break the fifth, the 200 period, I'm sorry, and hold it as support like we did back on Thursday so we can get another run at pulling upside away. Bears, any test of the 200 period? You want to stay at reject? Really, the goal if you're a bear is to make a move down through the 50 period and claim that as resistance moving forward. Okay, the, the idea, guys, the 30-minute, 4-hour, and daily, they're very simple. Okay, but that, that's the point. If we overcomplicate things, all it does is leave a lot of people confused and get nothing done. Because you know my belief here, all of this in the short term is psychology and a self-fulfilling prophecy with TA. Okay, so if we start overcomplicating things and looking at a million different indicators... It's not going to work because not enough people are watching all of them. That's why I keep it so very simple. And how each side, bulls versus bears, win each day is always very straightforward. And I think many traders find that as they get more complex, everyone starts out usually kind of simple with charts that look pretty basic. And then as they go from beginner to like creeping into intermediate, Everyone starts slapping a million things on their chart, and then you get to the most advanced traders. Retail traders, I'll say. And even institutional traders, but they're using slightly different software, likely. The most advanced traders and the biggest traders, their charts oftentimes start looking very basic again because that realization that, hey, this is the, it's psychology, which is why TA is relevant to begin with. It's really no other reason. So you want what has the most eyeballs, okay? So it's very basic. Now the daily. What's the story here on the daily? Well, back on Friday, guys, we rejected off the 50-day to a T. Story here tomorrow on the daily. Bulls. If we could press 22 and get above the 50-day moving average and hold that, that is two huge levels claimed in a single move. That's a huge win tomorrow if you're a bull. We claim 22. We claim the 50-day, both as support levels. That would be beautiful bears. If you could reject off the 50-day, if not before that, at 22 upon any test and start heading back downside, really bears the goal is to head downside toward 21. If not, crack 21 to the downside, though that might require a slightly larger move. Because remember, guys, here on Palantir, every single whole dollar is going to act as a psychological level with, of course, a level like 20 or 25 being slightly more relevant or even more eyeballs because they're even that much more obvious. Implied volatility here, basically flat back on Friday. So in comparison to the last week, I would say we are slightly high, uh, but a lot of days were basically leaving us in the mid range here. But just that one last day, um, the 24th, you know, in comparison to the last week based on Friday's IV leaves us in the kind of mid to high range. In comparison to the last month, we are, I would say, low okay slightly lower in the slightly lower range with a lot of the, the days in the last month being kind of in the same range okay this is all about context and in the last three months iv is clearly low this whole thing is three months of course understand where that stands in relation to your intended trade time frame very important if you're trading options now the expected move here for tomorrow out of the stock we have weekly expirations so the next expiration we have is friday's close June 7th, the expected move by that close compared to this last Friday's close is plus or minus $1.03 per share. Here's what we do. Divide that by five trading days, but that assumes all green days or all red days. So we add back 50%. That's what I'm adding back right now. That gives us a plus or minus expected move of $0.31 cents per share by tomorrow's close, Monday. That's with a little bit of educated guesswork. That's the market's expectation, the one standard deviation expected move. By no means is that meant to be exact. It's the market's opinion. If basically what it is, guys, is it's pulling all the data from the options, um, just the implied volatility of all the different contracts at that expiration. But what it really boils down to is that's like the market's pinpointed expected volatility when you take all the, the big sample size of opinions and kind of put the data together. 
That's what it is. It's not meant to be perfect. It's meant to be a baseline expectation based on all the data. So if you disagree with that, along, again, coupled with a strong directional bias, that could be a position for you. You, you want to disagree with the market, okay? Because that if you don't, you have no opportunity to take a position because you just agree with how everything's priced all the time. But you might be thinking, what about directional bias? Let's take a look. 328,000 total contracts traded here back on Friday. Just under a quarter million calls. That's 249 million calls. And just about 80,000 puts. Okay, so call side bias on the overall call per ratio. And if we break that down by time frame, the short-term speculators, the 0 to 20 delta range, we have 66,000 calls, 26,000 puts. Call side bias out of the short-term speculators as well. Listen, guys, if you want to get my personal daily scalp setup alerts, my in-play stock alerts, my human verified by me unusual options activity, that's how I'm tracking what the whales are doing. I human verify every single alert that goes through to members to ensure that it's actually unusual. Um, a lot of times, if with UOA especially, if the alerts are bot driven, meaning pulled from, from a, a data set, just using a bot, what you'll find is that you know, something like 25 to 50% of the time, they're easily explainable. Since I'm human verifying all of them, it takes those out. That's all going out in our private community. Uh, take a look at that link in the pinned comment. That'll let you get grandfathered in at the current rate so you're immune to price raises that are happening here in the very near future. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.